how much oil consumption is actually normal in a modern engine. That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. You can inquire at the website about that. Now, nothing is certain to strike terror into the heart of the modern car owner as much as unexpected oil consumption. Because if you're like me and you grew up shortly after the death of Alexander Graham Bell and before the advent of Twitter, engines really didn't use much oil until they started to go poopy in their trousers and lose their minds because of old age. You know, things have changed, though, although many people have not kept up with these changes. One of them is Michael Allen, a nice bloke who is a little concerned about this issue. And he says, I need your advice or opinion on my 2017 Kia Optima. Had it since brand new, nice car, good fuel economy, no major issues. However, it seems to use about one litre of oil, 5W30 Penrite fully synthetic, every seven and a half thousand Ks. I know that Kia says service at every 15,000, but I do the interim service as well. I have brought up the issue with Kia, who tell me it's quite normal for this engine, 2.4, to use some oil between services. My previous Kia Cerato, two litre direct injected, didn't use a drop between services. Can you please give me your opinion on this, just to put my mind at ease? Appreciate you taking the time to read this email. Kind regards, Michael Allen. P.S. Love the YouTube channel. Well, that's very nice of you to say, Michael. Thank you very much and relax because you don't have a problem. And let me put your mind at ease in greater detail like this, okay? Imagine we are all suddenly teleported to a parallel universe, which is just like this universe, except... Humanity has not evolved beyond the bicycle in the context of mobility. It's the best they've got, okay? And there are these vast multinational conglomerates pumping out the bicycles and they compete fiercely with one another and they can all give you a thousand reasons why their bicycle is better than everyone else's, which is emphatically shit. Not that dissimilar to how the car industry works, really, is it? Anyway, if you had a meeting at... I don't know, bicycle Daimler one day in the boardroom to pitch this miraculous new invention that you've come up with in your garage and you're calling it, just for shits and giggles, the internal combustion engine. And you lay it out for all the members of the board sternly thinking there and they're all dressed in lycra with their clip-in shoes and their helmets on. And they look at you and they hear your explanation about how you're going to relieve humanity of the burden of cranking itself from A to B forevermore using the waste product known as crude oil, right? And you get into the granular detail of how this engine, is, this miraculous engine is going to friggin' work, okay? They'd all look at you and get you scheduled, right? You would leave the boardroom in a straight jacket, okay? And there'd be no coming back, ever right? Because internal combustion engines are insane. They, they shouldn't work and yet they do, right? They're so complex. They've got waste heat and all of this stuff. You've got the, you know, you get into the detail of how you're going to get the gas in and the gas out and the pumping losses and you're going to deal with this and that. Blah, 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 blah. It's just, <laughs> it's just never going to work, is it, right? Except it does. This is a preamble, right, to suggest that Engine engineers are always walking down this tightrope. It's a balancing act. They're trying to do this, but they know if they go too far this way, there's going to be this kind of feedback and that's going to be a bastard, right? So let me give you an example of that, okay? We all know, because combustion is one of the most studied processes, internal combustion, one of the most studied processes, we all know that a shitload of waste heat goes out the exhaust pipe, Okay. What can you do about that? It's not like you can really use it for anything because it's not actually high enough in temperature compared to the environment to lunch much off it, right? It's a problem because you're losing a lot of waste heat, but it's not useful heat. And frankly, the best we've got for that waste heat is turbocharging, right? Some brainiac one day invents the turbocharger, which lunches off the energetic expansion of exhaust right up there near the exhaust ports. It's energetically expanding, driving a pump, 
That's all a turbocharger is. It's a way of reclaiming energetic expansion that would otherwise be lost out the arse end of the exhaust pipe, okay? So we know where these losses are and engineers work on that all the time and they work on these parasitic losses as well. Like, for example, the pumping losses. And one of the best strategies for dealing with pumping losses is something like exhaust gas recirculation, which increases notionally the engine's volumetric efficiency. So there's that. Or you can have cylinder deactivation. So at low loads down the highway at cruising speeds, you can actually shut the valves in half of the cylinders and you will eliminate the pumping losses in those cylinders if you do that. So that's a way of improving efficiency in a narrowly defined operational range, right? Um, Another way of doing it is to tackle the problem of internal friction right? And this is where oil consumption comes in because internal friction, some of it is unavoidable, but you can sort of wind back how aggressively the rings grab onto the bores of the cylinders, okay? And you can wind back the clearances or you can increase the clearances between the valve stems and the valve guides in the head. And this makes it easier for the valves to move up and down and the ring thing makes it easier for the pistons to move up and down. But when you do that, you open the door to increased oil consumption. So it's a balancing act. You've got the drive for fuel efficiency here and you've got the drive for reliable engine operation here and you don't want to be tipping two litres of oil into your engine once a week, right? Owners would be rioting in the streets if that happened. And I have to say, some companies have managed this badly. They've been overzealous in their targeting of internal friction and they've been unsympathetic to owners experiencing abnormal oil consumption and they've been very bad at communicating exactly what these design objectives are and how they conflict with one another and where the balance is. So this is a long-winded way of saying that In the 70s, if your 15-year-old car started to use oil, that was invariably a disaster because it was like a big red flag going up saying, rebuild, exciting new rebuild coming soon to a space near you, right? And that's not the case today because a little bit of oil consumption and a litre every 7,500 Ks is hardly what I would call excessive, Just deal with it, particularly if it does not get any worse. If that consumption just stays the same, every 7,500 Ks, it's a litre, then just do what the owner's manual says, dude, and open the bonnet, check the oil level on a level surface, engine shutdown and cold once every fortnight or so. And then when you get to the fill mark on the dipstick, do what the manual says. It usually says, you know, when you get to when you get to add, add a specific amount that the manual will say, let's say, you know, a litre or something, just tip it in then and repeat this process. Check every fortnight and then you will never have a catastrophic low engine oil induced failure. But the same sort of oil consumption every six months, whatever it is, don't worry about it, completely normal and factor in the thing that most people don't when they arc up about this, they don't say to themselves, well, this is saving me money because I'm actually burning less fuel every time the engine is turning and burning because this oil consumption is offset by an attempt, uh, an actual you know, completely above board attempt by engine design engineers to reduce parasitic losses and increase your fuel efficiency. 